Hi, my name is Kieran. I'm an ENT registrar in the south of England. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview on laryngeal and nasopharyngeal cancer. When considering laryngeal cancer, it's important to consider the differential diagnosis for hoarseness. Hoarseness can be caused by various um, areas, um, specifically infection or acute or chronic laryngitis. Benign causes on the vocal cord are much more common than cancer, and this includes nodules, polyps, and cysts. Vocal cord palsy can also give hoarseness. This can be idiopathic, iatrogenic, or related to cancer. And then of course, cancer itself. This includes laryngeal cancer, which we're going to talk about today, but also lung cancer. Lung cancer can present with the left vocal cord palsy as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve takes a path around the arch of the aorta on the left side before returning up to the neck again. And a left-sided lung cancer can therefore compress the recurrent laryngeal nerve causing hoarseness. Hypothyroidism can give hoarseness as can gastroesophageal reflux disease and laryngopharyngeal reflux, which is essentially acid reflux that affects the voice box. The most common cause of laryngeal cancer is squamous cell carcinoma. Both smoking and excess alcohol are both independent risk factors for squamous cell carcinoma. However, in combination, in excess, they have a synergistic effect that significantly increases risk. Symptoms of laryngeal cancer include hoarseness, as we've mentioned. Patients may present with metastatic lymphadenopathy. As the tumour becomes bigger, the patient may get dysphagia and preferred otalgia. And of course, with any disseminated metastatic disease, a patient can have weight loss and anorexia. Various investigations must be performed in a patient with suspected laryngeal cancer. The lesion must, of course, be biopsied. If there are any lymph nodes, these can be sampled using ultrasound guidance, where a needle is passed into the lymph node and fine needle aspiration cytology is carried out. Staging is achieved with CT scanning and MRI scanning. Staging is, of course, as per every cancer, through the TNM approach, which stands for tumour, nodal status and metastases. A multidisciplinary team discussion is required for management. Treatment of laryngeal cancer is broadly divided into radiotherapy and or chemotherapy or surgical treatment. The smaller tumours, trans or laser microsurgery can be used to remove the tumour. This is essentially where the instruments are passed through the mouth with direct visualisation of the larynx and the cancer and the tumour is cut out using laser. A laryngectomy is the removal of the entire larynx and tumour. This is reserved for more advanced stages. This picture demonstrates a laryngectomy um, whereby um, the larynx itself is removed, as you can see in the diagram on the left. Normally, the larynx acts as a conduit between the trachea and esophagus. When the larynx is removed in the laryngectomy, the trachea and esophagus are separated the trachea is brought out through the front of the neck into what we call a stoma, and the patient breathes through this area. Nasopharyngeal cancer. Nasopharyngeal cancer tends to be a relatively rare form of cancer that is more common in patients of southern Chinese origin. It originates in the nasopharynx, which sits at the back of the nose, and can be linked to the Epstein-Barr virus and a salted fish diet. Because of the proximity of this cancer to the eustachian tube. Patients may present with a glue ear or hearing loss as an early symptom. As the tumour grows, it can involve the orbit, the brain and the neck. Treatment for this is predominantly with radiotherapy with or without chemotherapy, although surgery is less commonly used. 